We're back here in Pixelcore Studios in downtown Petaluma. We have again Mark Spencer, who's going to walk us through um, publishing titles in uh, Motion 5 for uh, Final Cut Pro 10 users. And uh, why don't you show us uh, kind of where we're at and where we're going. And uh... Great. Thanks, Steve. So we've, we've sort of talked about publishing in the generic sense of taking a motion project and publishing it to Final Cut Pro. And you have to choose the kind of project you want, a title, transition generator. Um, and then you can publish it so it's available. And we kind of got to this point where we've got our own title that we created, very simple title that we created uh, here in Final Cut Pro, and we have it in our project, and we can play the title. And we can also modify it, but all we can really modify is the text. And we can do a lot with the text. Um, you know, of course, you can change what the text says. Otherwise, there's not much point in um, in doing it here. So let's put... By the way, I hear, that's your sister, right? Yes, this is this is my sister, Annie, and she... Uh, 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 man, she's part owner of several restaurants in San Francisco and was kind enough to let Ex us. Excellent restaurants, by the way. They are, but I'm biased. But <laughs> are, yes. no, I've eaten yes. there. They're excellent. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I'll put her name in there. And then, you know, the, the usual kind of stuff. So I won't spend too much time, but let me just use a, a big font so we can see all these big impact font here. And then we can change the, the size of the font and we can change the alignment. <clears throat> but you can't change the square colors. That is true. I can. I mean, I can even add an outline or a glow or drop shadow to the face. There's a lot of things I can do to the text, um, but we can't do anything about these sort of floating squares. Like, what if we wanted a different color for those? Correct. There's nothing we can do. Different kind theme of, colors, like maybe a blue yeah. or a red or whatnot. And this is where we were back in sort of Motion 4 and Final Cut 7. You could create these templates and you could modify the text. And you know, that was about but it. You, but you had to have a separate template for every change that you wanted. So if you wanted a different uh, color lower third, you'd have a template for red, template for... Yeah. So it created all of these files. Exactly, and, exactly. Right. And for one particular one, you couldn't do anything. But that's... That's totally changed now. So um, when you think publishing, there's publishing the motion project, but there's another layer of publishing, which is publishing individual parameters from motion to Final Cut. Excellent. So for example, what we're going to do, we're going to go back into this motion project. So I'm back down here in the titles browser in the bottom right corner. I'm going to right click on it and choose open in motion to open this guy back up. A little aside, um, when we looked at earlier at open in motion, for some of the presets in Final Cut, it said open copy. I noticed that, but this is an original. Right, so we're modifying this original, because since we created it, right. we're modifying I'm it. I'm glad you pointed yeah. that out, it's good. So when I say publish parameters, here we are in motion, what I mean is any parameter, I want a parameter, I'll go to the inspector, and if you have anything selected, like let's select this uh, replicator here, and here it's opacity, it's scale, it's position, all of these things are parameters. There, there are things about it that you can change. Any of those things uh, that you can change the value. For instance, if I drag on the scale slider, you see it gets much bigger. Um, changing the scale right. parameter. Or the position, I can drag it left or right, or I can uh, rotate it around. Uh, but these are all parameters properties. associated with the sequence replicator. Yes, and it's basically these properties, we're in this transform properties right now, apply to any kind of object. Sure. We happen to be rotating a replicator. Because you selected the replicator. Yes. And you, I could have rotated anything, but this, in this case, is the replicator. Any of these parameters can be published to Final Cut Pro so that in Final Cut Pro, you can adjust them. That's... Okay? Yeah, it's... It's all it, about control, baby. It's, it is. It's, it's very and you powerful. Could, and you can give the user... You could tell the Final Cut Pro or publish certain parameters for Final Cut Pro user and not publish others. So you're essentially controlling what uh, pro uh, parameters that user has they access can, yeah, to. Yeah, they control. So from a motion graphic designer standpoint, you can keep things consistent that you want to be kept consistent and open up other options. Right, because let's say you're working for a large company, a big, you know, you know, let's say you're working for Disney and you're a graphic designer. You don't want an editor necessarily going in and, you know, messing up with the design of the... But maybe there's a certain scale of the logo that's got to sure. be or a certain color. You don't want right. to mess with that, but you want them to allow them to change the position of something. Excellent. Okay. So here, let's say we want to change the color of uh, these little rectangles here. So I'm going to select this source rectangle that the replicators use, this little shape. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go to what's called the shape inspector here. Right. And... Um, this particular shape has a fill. I'm going to choose show, and it's filled with a gradient. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm going to pop open the gradient, and there's a couple color tags on the gradient. I'm going to select the orange one over here, and that fills in this little color parameter. Now, what I can do is I can publish that color swatch right to Final Cut. So the user can change the color. Exactly. So this tiny little downward facing arrow, and Motion has a lot of little pieces here, but there's a tiny little downward facing arrow that only appears when you move the mouse over it. Otherwise, it's not even there. Wow. But if I click on that, it's called the animation menu. 
And when I click on it, I get a pop-up menu and there's a lot of interesting things in here, but the one I'm interested in right here is publish. So I'm just going to click publish and that's it. Wow. What, yeah. What, yeah, that's it. It looks like nothing happened, but if I go to the top and by the way, this is something new. Um, in the layers list, there's something called the project. And that wasn't in previous incarnations. Now, did that only did that only show up when you uh, added the publish no, to that property? That, that's been there. I just all didn't along. just didn't see yeah, it. Yeah, and I, okay. I really didn't talk about it last okay. last episode, but it was there. It's always there, and this is your basic properties of your project. In fact, if you go to project properties, it tells you things like, you know, the preset you've used, the, the resolution, the yeah. frame frame rate, those kind of things. But in this project tab here you can see published parameters. I see. And we're publishing the color. In fact, I'm gonna close this so we just see it like that. We don't need to expose the individual red, green, and blue sliders there. So I'm gonna close that. I'm gonna hit Command S to save, and I'm gonna go back over to Final Cut Pro 10, okay? Now, if you select the title in the timeline, um, we now have, in addition to this text tab, this title tab. I shouldn't say we now have it. It was always available. If I click on it now, you'll see there's nothing. Trans, there's nothing. Right. Like, well, wait a minute. What? It didn't work. So here, here's something kind of fundamental about this whole process is when you make a change to your motion project, it only changes the version in the browser. So you have to reapply the title then? Yes. Yes. Okay. And, and it's easy to do because if you just, if your title is selected in your timeline, you go to the browser and double click the new one, it will, um, Replace and the it honors one. the duration of the original title. It honors the duration, and the other thing it does, I'll just trim that back a little bit actually, it also keeps the text that you changed. Nice. Okay. It doesn't nice. keep the formatting you made to the text. Right. It's using what the template had. But here's the cool thing, look at this. Now in this title tab, under Publish Parameters, we have the color swaps. Sure. So I can click there, and I can choose a different color for this guy. Look okay. And give it a completely different look. Now, in this case, I just chose to change one of the color tags of the gradient, right? right. I didn't choose the other one. So it only published one side of the of the gradient. Yeah. Then. So that's that's all that's all I'm affecting. But what's really kind of cool about this is um, let's take this just one step further here. I'm going to go ahead back to motion. Actually, let me right click on this and choose open copy. I don't really need to because it is open. Right. Uh, but but it's kind of force a habit. If I go back to motion here. Um, and I'm gonna go back to the project. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna unpublish this guy. I'm gonna say unpublish. Right. Don't want it anymore. Okay. Okay. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to that shape. And for the gradient, I'm gonna take this gradient, I'm gonna right click on the word gradient. You can publish the whole gradient? The whole thing. Oh, wow. The That's whole awesome. thing. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just great. Why wouldn't you have done that to begin with? I mean, because again, it's about that limiting, limiting thing. Right, because before, no matter what I did, I'd sell this nice white to some color gradient. So right. it doesn't really change the overall design. But if I wanna have more control in Final Cut, I can publish the whole thing. So now if I go back and select the project to look at what the published parameters are, mm -hmm. there's our whole gradient. So I'll save. I'll go back to Final Cut Pro. I'll select the existing title, and then I'll double click this new title. It. Yep. Actually, it does not. It 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 comes back to the the duration goes back to what the template is. Oh. So the template settings are applied to the okay. title. But now up in the title tab of the inspector, we've got the full gradient, and not only can we change these individual color tags to different colors. Uh, we can, you know, add color tags to it and, wow. you know, because you publish the entire parameter right. of so, the gradient. So everything that you can do in a gradient is available here, uh, right here in Final Cut. And that's kind of the second level of the meaning of publishing is that you can choose what parts of your design that you want to expose to be modifiable in Final Cut without overwhelming the Final Cut user with you know, you look in motion and there's hundreds and hundreds of things you yes, can adjust, right? Uh, absolutely. So it makes me think of something. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a Final Cut Pro user and someone, a motion user friend of mine, hands me a finished uh, title like this. Do I need to have Motion 5 and to, in, in order to actually run with the uh, uh, this title? Or nope. This thing? Nope. If it's, if it's in there, because Final Cut Pro, independently of motion, uh, is, is built on the architecture that supports these motion projects. I see. So um, if you don't have motion, you can't create the projects, you can't open the presets in motion, but anybody, anything, all these presets will work for you and anything anybody creates and gives to you will work for you. I think yeah. that's pretty powerful stuff. Yeah, it's great. And it keeps getting better because there's another step you can go to, which we'll talk about 
next okay. time. That will be the subject of our next uh, lesson, which will be uh, rigging and uh, in motion. And uh, Mark is the author of Ripple Training, uh, Ripple Training's Motion 5 Fast Forward for uh, those who want to learn kind of Motion 5 from the ground up, and Motion 5 Introduction to Rigging and Publishing Titles, Transitions, Effects, and Generators. And so we, we're really glad to, to have you in the studio. And we really appreciate you watching Mac, Mac Studio. Thanks for watching.